taking a look at machine level security. What we're looking at here are steps you can take to protect your computer or your work computer. This doesn't necessarily have to be connected to a network. We're looking at protecting the physical machine that sits on your desk or sits on your lap. We're looking at ways we can protect our computer itself. And we're going to take a look at three components of this. We're going to take a look at the physical security. We're going to take a look at authentication. And we're going to take a look at protecting your data. First, physical security. This is the act of physically protecting your computer. And the first rule of any type of computer safety is restricting physical access to it. In other words, you only want people who are supposed to have access to the computer to have access to it. One of the cool things about computers is that you can bypass pretty much almost any security method on a computer if you can get your hands on it. I don't know if that's a cool thing or not, but it is um, from a perspective of cracking into computers. When I had my own computer shop, more than once somebody would bring me their computer and they couldn't remember their password and so they were locked out of their computer. There are many free tools available online that you can download where you can boot the computer to, and we talked about booting in previous videos, you can start the computer off a disk or a CD or what have you, or USB drive, and completely bypass the security. You can reset the security, passwords, all that stuff. It's not that hard to do. And so the first step of any physical security is simply keeping people's hands off of it that don't belong touching it. So here are some tips for the home user. One, don't have the computer visible from a window. Now, I know this kind of almost sounds kind of like duh or why bother, but think about it. In any type of security, the general idea of security is to make your stuff harder to steal, harder to take than somebody else's stuff. Most thieves, most bad guys are looking for an easy score. They're looking to get something easy, not a lot of hassle, not a lot of risk to them. And so if they can see your computer, let's say you live in an apartment complex, and your really nice computer is visible from a window, they're going to notice that. And they're going to go, that's an easy target, as opposed to not showing that you have a really nice computer. The difference in this is simple. If you don't show that you have the stuff, people are going to go and find the easier target, the easier score. A bad guy is not going to break into a house without knowing or suspecting that there's something really good in there worth taking. So step one is keep your stuff private. Keep it out of the window. Don't let people see it. Two, keep computer in room that can be locked. Well, this is especially important if you live in a place where you can't really control access to who comes into your house and who doesn't. Now, you're thinking, why would I live there? Let's say you have roommates. Let's say you live in a dorm. If you can't control who comes to the front door or if more people are coming to the front door than you would like, consider having your computer, your stuff in a room that can be locked. Now, if you're in a dorm room, this can be a little bit more difficult because usually your dorm room consists of one door to your room. Something that I used to do when I was living in my dorm, I used to go to University of South Florida, go Bulls, back in Tampa, and that's where I did my undergrad, and I got a big captain's chest, and on that captain's chest, I got a padlock. Now, my roommate and I, we're, we're still friends to this day, best friends, we've known each other forever. I trusted him. I didn't trust the other people in my suite, and so I could lock, physically lock the captain's chest to keep people just from wandering into it. Again, the serious thief, the serious bad guy, could break the lock, could get in there, but we're talking about convenience. So if you do live in a dorm room, if you live in an area where you can't control who comes in and out of your room, consider buying some sort of container that you can lock up. The next thing is, if you buy a new computer, break down the box. Thieves will do their reconnaissance. The bad guys will do their scoping. And if you get a brand new computer and a brand new television and brand new cool stuff and you leave the box out in the front yard where anybody can drive by, that kind of goes back to rule number one. Don't show your stuff. So you want to break down the boxes. You don't want to advertise that, hey, I got a lot of really cool stuff here. 
because bad people notice that as well. And finally, this really doesn't have anything to do with this being stolen, but you should always have your computer plugged into, as well as your electronic devices, plugged into a surge suppressor or UPS, uninterruptible power supply. Surge suppressors have become incredibly cheap. In fact, you can pick up a really good one from a big box store for 20, 30 bucks or less. You want to make sure your stuff is plugged into a surge suppressor because electrical charges, surges, you know, thunderstorm, lightning storm, or rolling blackouts or rolling brownouts can really damage your stuff. So you paid a lot of money for it. Make sure you're protecting it. Tips on the go. When you're outside your home, when you're ever outside and you're taking your stuff with you, that presents a whole separate level of challenges. For example, a hotel. Now, for some of you, this doesn't apply, but if you do a lot of traveling for business, then pay attention to this one. When you leave your room, let's say that you have a room for a week or two weeks. When I was doing training, I'd be on the road for two weeks at a time. It doesn't matter how nice the hotel is. The reality is, is that once you're gone for the day, you're doing whatever you're doing, your room is opened. The cleaning staff comes in. They usually just don't clean one room. They're usually doing a series of rooms, and so they leave them open. So they can boom, 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 drop off linens, pick up linens, what have you. This means your room is open. And the cleaning staff doesn't know who's supposed to be in that room and who isn't supposed to be in that room. And so somebody walking in with some confidence can easily steal your stuff. So what should you do? If you have a laptop with you, consider putting it in a safe. If the safe is big enough, you can put it in the safe. At the very least, you need to put the laptop and your electronics and your good stuff in a drawer. So when somebody walks by, remember, they're looking for convenience. They don't go, oh, hey, look, there's a laptop sitting there. There's an iPad sitting there. There's some cool stuff sitting there. Oh, this is my room. Takes it and go. So take it, hide it, or, of course, take it with you. When I was, again, doing the trainings, a lot of the trainings were with the FBI as well as the DEA. And it's amazing to me how many people who should have known better didn't. And so you would leave, you would see stuff all the time being laid out, et cetera, et cetera. So hide it or take it with you. This one definitely has a lot of application. A lot of you watching this probably have this problem, and that is you're at the coffee shop or you're at a library. This presents a whole separate level of problems. Now, obviously, if you're sitting with your computer, not a big deal. But what happens if you have to go to the bathroom? What if you have to go get a refill of coffee? What if you have to go get a book? This opportunity can be exploited. There are Kensington connections. A lot of laptops have little connections specifically designed for basically a bike chain. Now, we're not really a bike chain, but a similar kind of a concept, except for electronics and computers, you can wrap a cord around a non-movable object and lock it that way. You can also get laptop alarms. You can get alarms from third-party vendors that can detect if the laptop is moved, if the laptop is closed, if it is stolen. I think they sell LoJack for laptops. Uh, you have different programs which will take pictures periodically if the laptop is stolen to show you who stole it as well as give you locations. And of course, you can always ask somebody to keep an eye on it when you're gone. Finally, the corporate environment. Servers should be kept in a secure room. Now, this is more for the course. If you're a general user, you're probably never going to touch the servers. The servers, however, the big computers, we talked about servers in a previous lesson, these should be locked up. Unless you're using the servers, unless you have a particular reason to be on the server, like that's your job, then you should not have access to the server room. Server rooms are usually locked up. They're usually exposed incredibly cold because of all the processing that goes in there the temperatures start to rise so they're going to be cold rooms they're going to be locked rooms they're going to be secure rooms and only employees who belong in there should have access to get in there and you can secure computers uh, in a corporate environment let's say you have a workstation so for example when i teach at the college the instructors have computers that we can use in the classrooms these can easily be taken so how do you secure them well you can secure them with cables you can tie them down. You can put them in cages or clamps. These are like metallic bases that you can bolt the computer down to. And you can also put them in a box, an enclosure, which is basically a lock box that the computer goes into. It's well ventilated, but it's locked down so they don't go wandering. All right, 
In our next video, we're going to talk about proving you are who you say you are.